Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the third lecture of the series. So in this presentation, I'm going to introduce the ideas and concepts of a semi-ring. So first and foremost, what is a semi-ring? Well, the semi-ring is a type of mathematical structure, uh, which we call it a uh, algebraic structure. Um, so one of the uses of semi-ring nowadays is that in order to man manipulate a weighted finite state transducer, you are required to know a little bit of uh, semi-rings. So, um, for example, a, a WFST-based uh, speech recognition right, uh, requires something known as a tropical semi-ring, which will be introduced later. And uh, if you want to optimize certain transducers, um, a log semi-ring is used. So all these uh, jargon will be cleared up later in the later lectures. Um, but the main thing is that if you want to operate on WFSTs, um, you have to know a little bit on semi-rings. Right? Uh, well, other more practical importance would be, suppose you're a computer engineer, um, learning semi-rings, algebraic structure, or abstract algebra in general, it, it allows one to reduce problem complexity, as well as uh, generic problem solving. Um, now, the idea of generic problem solving will be introduced later on as well, but this is a really useful concept if you're a pro problem solver. And of course, if uh, for a person like me, uh, if you're a mathematician, uh, semi-rings are fundamentally very, very different from fields, and uh, you can have uh, many, many new areas of research uh, thanks to the applications in uh, computer science, right? So now let's take a step back and start from top in order to fully understand what a semi-ring is. Now, based on your knowledge, now all these things should be familiar to you, right? Um, all these operations, you, you probably would have learned it in middle school, secondary school, high school, wherever it is, you have seen such operation, right? One plus two plus three is equivalent to uh, adding one and two and then adding three. Now, all these things, uh, to most people, they take it for granted. But for mathematicians, in, especially in pure mathematics, there is a rigorous study, an extension of uh, such a algebraic structure, and this is known as an uh, abstract algebra, right? So if I were to rewrite this using uh, algebra, classical algebra, uh, and uh, given any three real numbers, um, all these would still make a lot of sense to most of you. But to a mathematician, right, all these are actually properties uh, with their own unique names, right? So I will rewrite this into uh, our, a, a newer type of notation, right? So you can see that I've replaced the classical addition with this uh, O plus, and then I've replaced the classical multiplication with the O times. Now, these two, uh, operators are replaced for a reason, um, mainly is to not confuse you uh, uh, and hopefully you don't confuse yourself that this um, doesn't mean classical addition or classical multiplication. It just means that these are some abstract operator that you have not seen before. However, you know that these operators behave in this particular way. Right? For example, you know that this addition operator Ha, uh, has this thing known as associativity, where you, you when you add y and z together, it's equivalent to adding x plus y and then z together, right? And uh, of course, you, you realize you can flip x, x plus y to y plus x, and this property is known as commutativity. Um, so, so on and so forth, right? You have uh, something known as a I additive identity, where where this element, this is not this is not zero, the number zero. Right? This is not number zero anymore. It, it, it just means that this is an element from whatever set you're working with. So for example, uh, so you have x, o plus this additive identity, it gives you the same element again. So the multiplicative identity works the same way as well. This is not, this is not the number one, right? It's denoted as one bar. Uh, hopefully you don't confuse yourself as with uh, the number one. This is, this is certainly not number one, it could be anything, right? At the same, in the same context is that this minus x, negative x, it is not the negative of a real number, uh, of a positive real number. Um, it just, it, the, whole, the whole thing itself is a symbol and it's, it, it symbolizes the additive inverse itself. So if you take any element and then you add with its own additive inverse, right, it gives you the uh, additive identity. Right. Similarly, this this is not a real number raised to minus one of a power. No, it, it actually symbolizes a uh, a multiplicative inverse. So if you take an element and then you multiply it with its multiplicative inverse, it gives you one bar, the multiplicative identity. Now, uh, of course, uh, x cannot be the 
uh, additive identity, right? So, and then you have left and right distributiv distributivity, right? And uh, it looks ex exactly like how a real number would uh, look like. So, um, many algebraic structure, right? obey these rules and uh, these algebraic structures are known as a field right so uh, for example uh, a polynomial would, would would actually obey all these properties now of course I, I haven't defined what a, what a polynomial is um, well depending on the, the, the definition um, certain polynomials actually have the, its inverse right so then we move we move on and ask ourselves mm, what if we take away some of these properties? What, what if we take away some of these, these uh, uh, rules that we take for granted, right? So for, exa for example, now we require that this, this new algebraic structure uh, to, have, to not have commutativity and multiplicative inverse. So what, what does it mean is that um, for the multiplication operator, um, the multiplication need, no, need not be uh, commutativity co need not commute sorry any anymore so for example the most famous example would be the uh, the square matrices you know stuff that you learn in middle school or secondary school you, you realize that uh, multiplying two square matrices together right uh, a a times b is not necessarily equals to b times b times a so you realize that the the matrix multiplication is no longer a commutative operator at the same time uh, given any square matrix a um, its inverse may or may not exist right so so this this entire structure that you have seen before is actually known as a ring a ring so we are almost there we're almost there so we ask ourselves next what else can we take away what else can we take away in order to, 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 to call it a semi-ring. So now, now let's weaken the structure further. Okay, let's, let's consider the case now where the additive inverse may or may not exist anymore. Right now we are left with one, two, three, four, five, six and seven rules. Now if, if a algebraic structure right, uh, obeys these seven properties, we, we call it a semi-ring. Now the um, the less known example, I suppose, is is the probability, uh, probability over the interval zero one. Now uh, you realize where uh, uh, if you were to define the operators as the classical addition and classical multiplication over the interval zero one, you realize that there is no uh, additive inverse as well as there's no multiplicative inverse for the probability semi ring, right? So so we all of these things we have seen before, but it's just that we we haven't really formalized it and formally call it a semi ring. So this is a uh, this is basically abstract algebra, uh, the, a short introduction at least, right? So a short recap is that we have, we have been introduced informally to fields, rings, and semi rings, right? And if you want to learn more, um, do take a look at these two books: uh, Speech Recognitions, Algorithms Using fi Weighted Finite State Transducers by Ta Takaki Hori, and uh, Meiras. Uh, Maurice's uh, paper on speech recognition with weighted finite state transducers. Uh, they are pretty good read and a pretty good introduction to uh, semi-rings as well. So I hope to see you in the next lecture.